I'm gonna share with you a project that took me eight years to finally build, our garden trellis, which holds our climbing roses. Hey, I'm Handyman Dan with You Can Build This. Many times over those eight years, I felt so much like the mom and dad in the movie Up, where they were saving up for a big vacation and then life would happen. They would have to break open their piggy bank to be able to pay for any bills or car repairs or insurance, you name it. This is exactly how I felt, but I kept my dream alive. One day, I was gonna be able to build my climbing trellis and that day came finally in the spring of 2021. So what's with your dream about building a trellis? I wanted my own trellis for a few reasons. I have very fond memories of my dad occasionally bringing home a bouquet of roses to my mom. And it was incredible because every time he did this, her face would light up. And she would always do two things. First, she would run up to my dad and give him a big smoochy kiss. Kids, thank you for the reference to Bluey. Then she would immediately go to the kitchen, grab a vase, put the roses in the vase, and put it on the center of the table for it to be displayed to everybody that walked by. But because of those experiences plus others, I've always been very intrigued by roses. Yeah, but couldn't you have just planted a rose bush? Our garden at the time was roughly 20 by 22 feet. So I felt like planting a whole rose bush would take up a lot of valuable garden real estate, meaning I wouldn't be able to plant <laughs> vegetables in that spot. Plus with rose bushes, I feel like you can only really enjoy half of the rose at a time unless you walk all the way around it. A trellis would allow me to more efficiently utilize my garden space. And by adding climbing roses to it, it was the best of both worlds. And of course, you can use a trellis for other climbing plants, but that would ruin my story. But you've never built a trellis before. What gave you the confidence to be able to do it? True, I had never built a trellis before. But when I sat down and analyzed the components of the trellis, eventually I was like, hey, I can build this. There are only five steps to this build and you will be surprised at how simple each step is. And after we go over all of the steps of what it takes to build a trellis like ours, I will share with you some amazing things that we've been able to do that we never expected. And it made that eight year wait so worth it. We built our trellis in the summer of 2021. Now coming up on almost three years later, Later, with winters with a ton of snow, some very harsh winds, and some incredibly hot and dry summers, our trellis is still looking amazing. So why even build a trellis? Number one, it can act as a focal point for your garden. We built our trellis to hide our ugly stucco wall. Ew. Our garden area faces the south, and so our stucco wall gets really, really hot in the summer. By having our garden trellis in front of the wall, it's able to actually cool down that wall and hide it. Number two, a garden trellis can act as a privacy screen for your neighbors. Number three, the plants you grow on your trellis can bring a lot more pollinators and good bugs to your garden. And number four, my favorite, you get a ton of bang for your buck with the amount of plants you get for the small amount of real estate that it takes up by growing vertically instead of horizontally. For example, our trellis is 19 feet wide. The two outside parts are eight feet tall and the center section is 10 feet tall. Overall, we have a vertical growth growing space of 170 square feet. Now compare this to the amount of horizontal space that it takes up in our garden. With the roses planted in front of it and with it being a foot away from our wall, it only takes up two feet in length and 19 feet in width. That's only 38 square feet horizontally. If I were to lay that down and compare that to how many planter boxes I would need, our trellis would take up probably a third of our garden space. Yeah, but you do construction all the time. What makes you think I could build a trellis? Let's break down the simple simple components that make up a trellis. To hold everything up, you've got the concrete footings. On top of the concrete footings, you have the vertical posts. Connecting all of your vertical posts together, you've got your horizontal beams. Then you've got the inner structure, which I'm calling the inner frame. And your inner frame holds the mesh or lattice that your climbing plants will hold on to and attach to as they grow. Then if you wanna add a little bit of extra flair to your trellis, you can add some extra trim. Okay, yeah. Give me the steps. Step one is your design phase. One tip I can offer with this is to design around your final product. For our particular circumstance, I knew that I wanted climbing roses. I wanted a lot of different colors and kinds of climbing roses. And I knew I wanted it to be a big focal point in our garden. 
I wanted our three climbing roses to grow and kind of mesh over each other, taking a boring old stucco wall and turning it into a wall of flowers. Amazing, I know, right? One important aspect I had to incorporate into our design was to make sure that my trellis was far enough away from our wall because the heat absorbed from the sun in the summer months was way too much and I didn't want to cook my roses. So I placed my trellis one foot away from our wall and this has allowed enough air to get behind the trellis and keep the plants cooler. Step two is to place your concrete footings. A great structure starts out with a great foundation. Make sure to check out with your local building requirements on how deep and how big to make your footings for your structure. I used these concrete cylinder forms from our local hardware store for the concrete footings. And I actually went pretty deep because I wanted to make sure that my trellis was gonna last. I got these really beefy 4x4 post brackets because they have a hole at the bottom and they have a hole on the sides. And this would allow me to make a T-shape with rebar, firmly connecting my post brackets to my concrete. Yeah, these puppies weren't going anywhere. And I needed this because my trellis was gonna be really heavy, plus all the extra weight of the climbing roses as time went on. Another thing I liked about these post brackets is it had an inch standoff. And so my posts would be an inch above the concrete. And this would reduce the amount of water exposure from rain and snow. Step three is adding your structural lumber. This includes your vertical posts and your horizontal beams. The nice thing is you don't really need that many tools for this. You'll need a drill and a screw gun, a ladder, and then one tool I didn't have at this time but I wish I did was this post level. This level is awesome because it allows you to clamp it onto your 4x4 post and then it'll tell you both directions if you're level. I went with redwood material because of its natural resistance to rot. For my vertical posts and horizontal beams I went with 4x4 material because of its structural integrity. The center section of our trellis is 9 feet wide and I knew that a 2x4 would not span that distance without sagging over time. One thing that will really save you a lot of time and energy is to lay out all of your pieces before you install them and stain them. It is much easier to stain them when they're all on a horizontal surface. I placed all of ours on sawhorses and did two coats of stain on all sides. I used this Valspar stain. I went with the redwood tone and I used it because it said that for vertical applications it would last eight years and I could not be more impressed with this stuff. Coming up on three years it still looks amazing. You can save a ton of time and hassle by not having to clean out your roller every single time after you paint or stain. All you have to do is take your roller and put it into the bottom of a trash bag, spin your trash bag so it makes it tight and fold it over. And I had times where my paint roller was still wet after two weeks. And this was my own personal preference, but I really didn't want to see many mechanical fasteners in my trellis. To connect my horizontal beams to my vertical posts, I used an inch and a half dowel that I drilled into my beams and my vertical posts. And I used tight Bond 3 glue because it's rated for exterior use. To drill my dowels, I marked the center of my beams and drilled in two inches deep. I then matched that same hole into my vertical posts. The only caveat to doing it this way is you need to use bar clamps to squeeze the posts together. If you don't have bar clamps, you can use fasteners. I also wanted to reduce the amount of risk I would have of water seeping into the tops of my posts. I made sure that my top beams covered my vertical posts at the end. Step four is to add your metal mesh or your lattice. I decided to go with a metal mesh because I felt like it was more durable. Yes, I could have gone with a wood lattice, but I didn't want to take all the time and cut all these little tiny pieces. I knew it'd be really hard to get them in the perfect X shape. I was also concerned about once my climbing plants went on the trellis that my connection points between the X's would pop. So I went with metal hog paneling that I got from my local farming store. It's galvanized and comes in 16 foot long lengths, which was perfect for my center section. And then I could use the extra parts that I cut off and put it on my side panels. To attach this metal paneling, I first had to build an inner frame in between my vertical posts and beams. I made it kind of like a picture frame with mitered corners. I just took two by fours and ripped them down the center to get smaller pieces. The list of tools needed for this step are really simple. You'll need a drill and a screw gun. You'll need metal clips to attach your metal mesh. And you'll also need a reciprocal saw with a metal blade to cut your metal paneling. And then one thing that saved me so many times was this metal platform. It 
made it so much more convenient to cover a much wider space than a ladder would. To attach these frames inside of the trellis, I used deck screws. By making this wood picture frame inside of my posts and beams, I put my metal mesh on top of it, and then I could use these clips to hold the metal mesh in place. The metal mesh cuts really easy with a reciprocal saw and a metal blade. I just used a Sharpie to mark down all the points that I wanted to cut. I would recommend using gloves because as you're holding the metal and the friction of the blade can really heat up that metal. Step five is to add any extra additional decorative pieces to your trellis. I wanted to cover the tops of my trellis because without these decorative pieces, it just looked really boxy. For our trellis, I used two by six redwood lumber and at the ends, I cut out a little quarter circle. To cut these quarter circles, I used my grandpa's compass to put it in the corner and then used it to scratch the line that I was gonna cut into the wood. Then I used my jigsaw and cut that circle. I did use deck screws to attach these decorative pieces to my trellis and surprisingly, they hide really well. I just made sure to make my two by sixes wider than my four by four posts so that you didn't see them behind it. As promised at the beginning of my video, what has made this trellis so awesome has been being able to share these roses. What I love is being able to take our roses and make a very fragrant bouquet for our house. Or my kids love taking them to their teachers. But the icing on my fictitious trellis cake was when my sister-in-law asked if she could use some of my roses for her wedding bouquet. Talk about feeling so honored that roses from my little urban garden would become part of a bride's bouquet on her very special day. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I really hope that these five easy steps have helped you feel more confident to build something like this in your very own garden or that you have a little bit more inspiration on what you want to build for yourself. If you decide to build something like this, let me know in the comments below how your project turned out. If you found this video helpful, make sure to check out our other gardening videos. I have a video on how we built our garden arbor. I have a video about a tour of our garden. I have a video about how to install a drip system or if you want to learn how to build or fix other things, I have a lot of playlists on my YouTube channel. We'll see you on the next video.